after a long six year break from the franchise, Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Men Tell No Tales is finally out. Yes, Dead Men Tell No Tales. Apparently we needed a, another film in the franchise that had the word dead and man in it, so we're doing that again. There's two modes of thinking when it comes to the Pirates franchise. There's those who like only the first film, and then there's those who like the entire trilogy. Nobody likes the fourth film, <laughs> it seems like anyway. Uh, so when the fourth film originally came out, I was hoping for a continuation of the trilogy because I grew up with it, I really liked it. Uh, but then we instead got a really boring story that had nothing really exciting going on, had really boring action sequences, not that great of humor, and just an over-repetition of explaining the plot that wasn't even that complex to begin with. With Dead Men Tell No Tales, we finally get the movie that I thought we were gonna get six years ago. It continues what happened in the trilogy, begins to wrap everything up in a nice, sort of melodramatic way, and we finally get to see some of the characters from the original trilogy. The story is simple enough. It's Will Turner's son, Henry Turner, trying to find the Trident of Poseidon, which has the power to lift any curse throughout the entire world. On the way, he runs into Karina, Jack Sparrow, and they go on a swashbuckling adventure. It's just like the first film, and it's actually a lot of fun. Henry runs into Salazar, and Salazar, for some reason, lets him go. But that sets up the whole predicament between Jack Sparrow and Salazar. But that's one of the problems. You see, Salazar just let Henry go, and that's one of the plot holes, one of the many plot holes in this movie. And it's just, it begins to be too many to count. With the original three movies, there were plot holes here and there, yes, and there was a lot of plot going on in general, but I remember always thinking it was fine because there was a lot of humor and great action sequences, a lot of epicness to just kind of keep us in their seats to say, you know, I can ignore all this. In this movie, however, it begins to be almost too much, to a certain degree. I do love all the humor in this movie. It was actually a lot funnier than the last film. It really goes back to the roots of the first film. Uh, there's great action sequences. There's a great scene where they try to steal a safe. It's actually exactly like Fast Five, but they one-up it because the safe also drags around an entire building through the streets. It's crazy. It's impossible, but it's a lot of fun. There's a scene where Jack Sparrow is just spinning around on a guillotine as the blade keeps flying back and forth towards his face, almost every time nearly cutting his head off. It's just, it's stupid, yeah, but this is what the original films were like. It was really kooky, really weird situations that Jack Sparrow got into. For every good scene though, there's a plot hole. Like for instance, we find out Jack Sparrow didn't actually get the compass from Tia Dalma, apparently. Apparently he got it from some guy who was on his boat, I, whatever, I suppose. There's also this whole scenario about when he gives up the compass, because he trades it to get a bottle of rum, and then the whole world shakes, and for some reason, that little moment of him giving up the compass allows Salazar to escape from the Devil's Triangle, which, I mean, didn't he give up the compass several times in the first three films? There's also just way too many last second additions. For instance, there's suddenly a father-daughter uh, scenario where someone is the father, finds out he's the father of one of the other characters, and I just thought it was really rushed, out of nowhere material to put in the movie because there was no build-up in any of the other movies for this, and while it'd be an interesting way to change that character, they don't take advantage of it because they introduce it within the last 20 minutes of the movie. I think Johnny Depp pushed it a little too far. I don't know exactly how to compare it to the other four movies, but there's definitely something different here. But I love that a lot of the characters from the past couple films come back. We have Gibbs, we have Murtaugh and Mulroy, we also have Marty, and uh, Barbosa, of course, is back, which in this time around, he's playing it like some old gangster who's been through his years and now he's just worried about accumulating wealth. It's actually, it's really, it's actually kind of funny. There's also a sea witch in the movie. Nothing else to say about that. The most exciting aspect for me before seeing the movie was Javier Bardem as Salazar. He really hammed up the performance, and not to say that no one's ever hammed up a performance in a Pirates of the Caribbean movie, but there was something 
just odd about the way he was put into the movie. I think a lot of that had to do with just the special effects. Weirdly enough, the characters I liked the most were actually the two leads. There's Henry Turner and there's Karina, and I actually really enjoyed um, following them. I really liked their, um, well, friendship. I guess it became a romance in the end, but I really liked those two characters. In fact, I would like to see those actors end up in a couple other movies after this, because I could see a career starting for both of them. The special effects in this movie, for some reason, they don't look nearly as good as Dead Man's Chest. It's amazing because that movie was a decade ago. All those movies were, but these effects are beginning to look a lot more like the first film. Not to say that the first films were even bad, but that was 2003. This is like 14 years later. Why can't the effects look nearly as good anymore? I think a lot of it had to do with the lighting and the cinematography, which I will say this, the original three, and even the fourth film, had great cinematography. They had really good looking scenes, really good looking shots, overall good lighting, all that. This movie is horrendous. I don't know what it is about some of these Disney movies, but they have some weird kind of look to them, almost like they're putting CGI over the entire screen. I don't know how to explain it, but there's something very muddy about the look, and it's almost like the camera's always too close, and that they're using the wrong lens. There's a great fight scene between Jack Sparrow and the front of a ship. You know, they usually put those mermaids on the front of ships. It actually comes alive and starts fighting Jack Sparrow. Should be really cool, right? But when you watch the scene, it's so dark and the contrast just doesn't work, that you can hardly see what's going on. Since the overall look of the movie wasn't good, what about the music? Because that's a big part of the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. Well, this time around, we don't get Hans Zimmer. We instead get a guy named Giostinelli. He actually worked on some of the other Pirates films. So he actually has some experience in this realm. And I have to say, the music was actually great. There's a lot of callbacks, specifically to the third film, that, of course, I really enjoy, but it works really well. My overall impression of this movie is, I think that if you liked the original three movies and hated the fourth one, I think you're going to enjoy this movie a lot. It makes up for a lot of what the fourth movie did wrong. There's humor, there's action sequences, there's characters from the original three movies, and there's the Black Pearl. In fact, when the Black Pearl is introduced, it's a really epic, really heartwarming scene. It's actually, it's on the same level for me as a fan to the uh, Millennium Falcon introduction in the uh, recent Star Wars movie. They said they were trying to achieve the same tone and the same greatness of the first movie. I don't think they succeeded in that at all. But what I think they did was make a great fan film you know, and with a fan film, there's a lot of plot holes, there's a lot of ignoring certain things, there's a lot of random additions, like a sea witch, because that's needed, I suppose. I think I'll be watching this movie again when it's released on Blu-ray, probably. I'll probably end up watching it more than I ever will watch the fourth film. Which, I hate to keep just comparing it to the fourth film, because that shouldn't be the only way to uh, rate this movie. But... It is a big deal. I mean, that fourth film, I will say, was one of the most horrendous movie-going experiences I've ever had. That movie was just so bad. And to see this movie that actually tightly wound itself in the pirate's lore, it was great to see it, even if they get a lot of stuff. Not really wrong, but they create a lot of plot holes. Because apparently this is supposed to be 20 years later, and Orlando Bloom and Keira Knightley still look like they're the same age from the other movies, which is weird. <laughs> so if you're a fan, I'd go see it. I think you're going to have a great time. I really wish they would stop at this one. They probably won't. They're probably going to make a sixth one that has the return of Davy Jones. Oh, whatever. But I will give it a 6 out of 10. Uh, I'm glad to see another Pirates movie in theaters. That's all I really have to say about it.